Hello friends, Molly Ponfadip here, CEO of the SOAR Community Network and co-founder of the SOAR Community Nebula. The goal for us this year is to bring to you and feature 1,000 champions of change and community builders. And today I'm delighted to bring to you a new friend of mine who is like another soul sister, Miss Melody Page Berry. Thank you so much, Melody, for being a part of our initiative, for being a part of our network. So much. I am super excited to have found you, found your network. This is amazing, exactly what I'm looking for. I am so delighted because I think you're doing amazing things as well, which now I'm going to ask you to go ahead and let our audience know what that amazingness um, is in your world. So what are you doing in the world, who you are, and what are you excited about most right now? Oh my gosh, that's a big question. Um, well, let's see. I have... I'm super excited to uh, continually build my organization, but to understand who I am and where I'm, what I'm about, I think it's important to know that um, I come from 13 years of classroom teaching, and, and then I went into um, full-time ministry for a few years. I left a great career and cried the last day of teaching because I um, really didn't want to leave, but I just had that that inner voice telling me I needed to do this. So I served for a few years, um, the economy crashed, and then I decided I was gonna go uh, try my hand at corporate because I didn't want any what ifs in my life. And I'm a firm believer that if you stay in your comfort level, you'll never grow. And it's okay if you wanna stay in there because clearly um, I love teaching. When I left teaching the last two years of my teaching career, I was nominated among who's who among America's teachers. So I am very passionate about teaching. I'm very passionate about seeing growth, bringing up leaders. Like that is something that I strongly believe in. Um, and when I just kind of took that concept into ministry and was able to preach and, and rise up women in the community, my, my specialty was um, high school students and women leadership. And so I enjoyed my time there. And then when, when the economy crashed, I needed to do something different. And I said, you know, well, I always wondered what corporate would be like. Let me try there. And then went into corporate and found a company willing to, to give me a position as the office assistant. And I was like, all right, I, I don't need a whole education to do this, but that's okay. So I went in as an office assistant, uh, humbled myself, but with excitement. And because of my performance within two weeks, I was the office manager. Um, within two months, I was creating and running the telemarketing department. And within two years, I was third in line in the company. So very exciting. And then after uh, uh, working with them for over six years, they acquired a new company and they asked me to run that one. So that was my corporate career and I had a total of 14 years in the corporate world as well. So that's been my background. And I moved from California to here, and I, I tried to resign, but they didn't let me. So I was actually running the company from Virginia. Um, and then uh, after a year and a half, I had, you know, I had a little, a little guy, a little Grayson, my little one, and he wasn't sleeping through the day anymore. So I was like, well, I can't, I can't juggle everything. And what, what was really important in my life at that point was being a great mom because I had Grace when I was 44. So it was important for me to be the best mom I could be because I didn't know if I would have another opportunity, right? So when you're when you're up in age, he was already considered a miracle baby for us. So um, so I decided to resign and work for a um, family company and my sister's company, and I was going to go part time. Well. I, I didn't know this about myself, but if you just hear my story, you understand I'm not a part-time girl. <laughs> and so part-time became full-time, became my son is now in full-time daycare, and I'm working full-time. But corporate money and family money are very different things. And I was like, well, this the payoff isn't there. And so I decided to start my own company um, and launched myself out. I, I, I got the courage by joining a network marketing company. Um, went up the ranks very quickly, was able to take my son out of full-time daycare the week that I resigned from my sister's company. Um, and so Fridays is mommy day and it still continues to be mommy day. I don't do anything on Fridays. 
And if I have to rearrange my schedule, then Wednesdays become mommy days. But the point is one day a week is mommy day. And that was, that was my, my goal is to actually do that for my son and for me. And so I created, um, went into this network marketing company, went up the ranks within six months. I was an executive, which is like four ranks up and was loving life. Um, the company changed their entire structure, their entire um, website, and it, it basically crashed. Um, my commission crashed. I went from making several thousand a month to making a couple hundred bucks. So it was, it was one of those things I'm like, okay, what do I do now? But in the interim, I had started Intentional Marketing Inc. And Intentional Marketing Inc. was basically working with small businesses to help them with their relationship marketing strategies to help with their current clients and bring in more referrals, right? Because that, that's that's the, the juice of your business. Like that is the heart, the beating heart of your business is who's referring you and how often. And so I started that. And then during that time that I launched out with a network marketing company, I actually founded Net 2.0 at the same the same month because I wanted an organization where um, uh, people could come to me and we could network and I really believed in education and I wanted that more of a platform and any networking event that I went to the education part wasn't there and if it was there it was only to promote that person's business right so when you go to a certain organized networking the, per the keynote speaker is up there to tell you all about their business so that you can refer them business well, it wasn't, and that's not what I really wanted. I really wanted who can come and just give, just give your knowledge. And if people really like your, your message and they like your story, they will naturally come to you and ask you more information about your company, your business, yourself. And that, that will naturally grow. That relationship will naturally grow and it will naturally become a referral source. So that's really why I, I built Net 2.0. And this month we celebrate two years for Net 2.0. I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited about um, continually crafting and molding uh, my own business with intentional marketing. But I got to tell you, Net 2.0 has taken over my world. Uh, we were launching out into doing new new locations. Or fingers crossed, we'll have a new location within four weeks. Um, and so I'm really my vision for that. And my goal to like to get out there and just be an impact in society because there's it's so expensive to get educated because people a lot of people out there are taking advantage of that right there's a lot of people who start their business because they have a passion they don't necessarily have a knowledge to do business but they you know they like to make jewelry so they start a jewelry business well there's a lot that goes into a business you can't just make jewelry and poof it magically sells right um, it goes the same thing. You want to paint a house? Great. Start a painting business. Well, there's a lot that goes behind that. And a lot of people are out there, um, and there's a lot of great, wonderful professional coaches. And if you can hire them and you have the funds to hire them, great. But if you don't have the funds to hire them, we're a resource, right? You can come to Net 2.0, you get educated, you can actually take what you've learned in Net 2.0 and plug it into your business that week and see a change. So that's that. That's great, Melody. Thank you so much. And it is really neat to, <clears throat> excuse me, be out in the community and know that there are different um, type of networking groups for whatever your desires are, your goals are for your business. And I think one of the key components for small business owners, um, especially I'm one myself, and we support a lot of small businesses as well. And when you and I connected and we met the first time, the one thing that we really, really loved about one another is this idea of really being there in support of the people that we're serving, right? So creating forums where people are truly being educated is very important because there's so many different networking groups here and attend them all if you want to, right? But the right. attention, intention where education is the key component of yours is what makes, I think, it unique. Yeah, it's, it's really the only, I mean, there's so many great organizations out there and, um, and I support all of them. In fact, I, I know a lot of the owners of a lot of them and I have placed myself to not be a competitor. I am not a competitor. If you are, uh, you know, if you are an insurance agent and you want to join a group where you're guaranteed referral passing back and forth, 
the net two point is not the place for you, right? You need to go to the other organizations where that's in their bylaws. Like this is what we expect. You give referrals, you get referrals kind of thing. In my organization, if you want to be educated, if you want to be motivated, if you want to see change, if you want to get out of your frustration, that's what Net 2.0 is about, right? Connecting with people who are also aligned with your thinking and building those relationships organically, naturally. Um, so that's what that's the different the difference. And quite honestly, you can you can be a member of both. You can be a member of that that lead sharing organization, or you can and you can be a member of Net 2.0 for for different reasons because you get fed differently. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to um, have us move on to the next question because I am interested to hear what your thoughts are on this. And, you know, as you look uh, back upon your life and all of your experiences in corporate, as well as when you were in ministry and all that, all that good stuff, um, can you recall an experience, a time, or perhaps a person that you can talk more about that really helped to um, reframe your way of thinking or shift you in a profound way to move you in the direction that you're in now? When I think back, there's so much, there's so many like small things that, that have happened that have like propelled me to the next step, to the next step. And I think if you had spoken to me, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, 20 years ago when I was in the classroom, um, I, I, might have just been like, I, I'm not going to, you know, I won't be or, or the owner of a networking organization. Like that's not, that's not even on the cards. Right. Um, but it's, I think if we keep our eyes open to the opportunity and our hearts and minds open to that small voice. And if you, you know, if you want to call that God, if you want to call that the universe, if you just want to call it your self driven you know, mindset, fine. But I listen to that voice. I listen to what I have to do next. And it's why I went into full-time ministry. And the thing is, you know, when I was deciding to go into full-time ministry, I was talking to leaders in my organization, in my church, and talking to other people that I had already become uh, great friends with in that church. And, you know, this woman stepped up and she said, if you're going to go into full-time ministry and quit your career, then I commit to giving you my spare bedroom in my apartment for a year. So, you know, and it's those, it's those things that it didn't cost her anything else because, like, she, you know, she lived by herself and that was great. But she's, she gave me the strength to say, okay, my gosh, I don't have to, that's already, a, you know, a relief. And to be able to just just raise a support team and not really not having to where is rent going to come from yeah. and that was huge that was huge it was for, for on her side she didn't think it was that big of a deal because again it's an extra bedroom but it's huge to me right it's huge to that person that receives that blessing and so that's what propelled me into that and and then to be able to go into a corporate company and <clears throat> literally after i was hired realized that the the CEO and the CFO were in disagreement about to hire me right and the CFO went out because she was like you're crazy I see this you know and so she went up to bat for me and they decided to hire me and you know and she she became the hero of the company right because they're like oh yeah you're right but it's those things that when people champion for you and you don't know I didn't know that she did that. I just thought, well, they must have liked my resume or whatever. But to know that you have people championing, championing for you, and you, I didn't, I didn't know her before the interview. Like she had no idea who I was. Um, and so it's just you never know the impact that you're going to make on someone with the words that are coming out of your mouth. Um, and and you may never know. You might run into somebody on the subway, and you might say, "My gosh, your hair looks great today." And because you said that, they went into their interview with a different kind of assurance, with a different kind of self-confidence, and they got the job that they maybe wouldn't have gotten had you not lifted them up with that one thing that you said. So I think in my life, when, I, when, you, when you ask me about you know, the kindness that I've received, I think it's just been so small, but it's giving me that confidence to go. And so I can pinpoint some people, but I, I'm sure I'm leaving so much 
recognition on the table because I don't know. Yeah. Because people have been that wonderful to me. I think it's all the, like you mentioned, all the small moments that add up to who we become. It's all the small actions that we take that lead us to create the things that we're meant to create, right? So I think I love that point. Uh, so then when you think about community builders and change agents in your world and what you've witnessed and experienced, what are some of the attributes that are consistent that come to mind for you? Um, for me, the, a change agent in the community is someone who sees the bigger picture. Right? Someone who realizes that it's beyond themselves, that they are just a drop in the bucket of an overall picture. Um, I think that's an important characteristic to have as a change agent because you have to understand that um, when people are saying stuff to you or you're having an interaction, it might be you, but it might be something else that's going on in their life. So your perspective has got to be large. Right? You have to have a huge perspective like, okay, well, clearly they're not having a good day. It's not on me. And instead of, of acting uh, with aggression or malice, then you just act with kindness and grace. And you're like, okay, I have had days where I have not acted myself, and I can guarantee you that that has happened. Um, and I definitely appreciate when people look back at me and say, are you okay? Like, is something wrong? And I, that, that's a lot of my response when that happened. Because I, I just drop whatever it is that we're talking about. And now the focus is, how can I make their day better? Like, what's going on? Because it's not me. It's not my business. It's not my product. It's not my whatever issue we're talking about, right? Some world issue. It's really what's, what's behind that, right? What's behind their action? Because that's only a symptom of the, of the bigger issue. And so I think that to be able to see the bigger picture and have that bigger perspective is definitely one thing. Understanding that money in your business is not the goal. It's a tool to get to the goal. And knowing what that goal is. What is it? And that goal can't be something as shallow as I want a Lamborghini, right? The goal has got to be I want to change lives. So what does that look like? Does that mean that you want to donate lots of money to an organization so that they can change lives? Because that's a, that is absolutely wonderful. If you want to become a philanthropist and, and donate a bunch of money to, to great causes, and that's awesome. If you want to build, you know, if you want to have enough money so you can have, build a, a house in the community where you can house, you know, orphans or moms or, or just give back, then that's great. But there's always going to be some give back because if the, goal is is something that's as shallow as a house or whatever but there's not a there's not another goal attached to that to help other people then when you reach that goal you it's empty there's nothing there you reach it and you're like okay well what's next because clearly i'm not satisfied um so understanding that the money is not the goal and that to, it's just a tool to get to the goal and that people not only um not only just give, like not only just give money, just give, but they teach others how to do the same. Or they teach someone that they're giving to how to get it themselves. Right? So become a teacher. Becoming a teacher in the community, I think that's huge. Yeah. Because it's not enough just to be able to give, but to be able to teach people on how how they can get for themselves. I mean that's a that's a standard, right? Yeah, we definitely know you're a teacher. Because <laughs> yeah, so many times in this interview have you said, you got to teach, you got to educate. I love that. It's so in alignment with, with your background and who you are. It's really cool. Uh, so any other thoughts on that one? Because I have another question for you. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So now let's talk about any causes or movements um, or initiatives that we may not be aware of that you're involved in that you are helping to advance uh, their mission. Uh, would you like to share some of those causes or movements and how are you utilizing your gifts and your talents and, and giving back and, and paying it forward? It's funny that you're, you're asking me this question because I, um, so as we begin to launch new locations for Net 2.0, I want to be aligned with um, something that we can give back to. And as I've done my research, it's just 
it's kind of disheartening some of these organizations where, you know, every dollar that you give, 60%, 50%, 40% goes to the actual cause. Um, and the rest of it goes to paying a CEO an exorbitant amount of money um, to run something that, you know, is volunteering, right? So, and I, not to say that these people shouldn't make money, they should, but exorbitant is like, there's no way that people should be making $600,000 to run uh, a, an organization where most of that money is coming from people who are donating that for a good cause, right? Um, so for me, that is important to find an organization that a lot of the, the funds are going in the right place. Um, and I have found one recently, very recently. I actually went to a Danny Johnson conference, and I don't know if you know Danny Johnson at all, um, but she is amazing. Her conferences, everything that she or uh, has earned in her conference pours back into this organization. She takes no money from all the conferences that she does, and she does like one a month. Um, and so her organization is called kingsransom.org. Um, and so you go to kingsransom.org, she's got um, all kinds of initiatives. So there's money pouring into sex trafficking to get children out of sex trafficking. There's money getting poured into um, helping orphans across the world, including the U.S., which is I love because a lot of organizations forget about us, right? We have issues too. We have sex trafficking right here. We have orphans right here. We have, you know, kids that are hungry right here. So I love that she's pouring money into the United States as well. And the, the other thing that she's doing is she's, she's found um, single moms across, across the world that are living out of cardboard boxes, feeding their kids mud because it's the only thing that takes the hunger away. Um, and she's building houses. So she's building little communities in these villages and each house is like $5,000 and you can build a house with running water and, you know, and um, uh, plumbing. So you, these are things that are, are super passionate about. And the thing about King's Ransom is that 100% of your dollar goes. It's 100%. Um, she has a, another, her company and another company are actually... Uh, pouring into King's Ransom to pay for all the salary of the people that work there. Um, all of the flights, everything that is needed for shipping or for whatever, or for the, you know, all the office um, cost, all of that is completely covered by uh, Danny Johnson's conferences or by uh, this other organization. So, and I just love that about her. And she, you know, she was somebody who, who basically made her first, few million in network marketing and has since, uh, you know, done a lot of investing and has, is just multimillionaire now. And she's pouring back. I mean, pouring back into her community and her world. Um, and I love that about her. So uh, I love that about the organization. Like I said, it is the only one I know about. If you know of anybody or anybody watching this knows of anyone, please let me know. Um, because I, I love that. I think that if you're able to, there's no reason why 100% of your dollar can't go to what you really are passionate about. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that. And my husband and I are just, you know, we're always looking for ways to, to give back. Um, clearly we give to our church. We give to, you know, a radio station because we love that, that just pours, you know, joy and, and excitement into people's lives every day. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that I, there's a lot more things I would love to do. Um, and uh, yeah, and just even the adoption issues in this country are crazy. Like, I don't feel it should be this hard to adopt a child that, you know, that is in foster care and literally is only viewed as a paycheck to somebody. Uh, those people, there's a lot of resources that can be, that can be given to get those kids out of those kinds of environments and into loving homes. Because there's a lot of people out there that would take a child in a heartbeat, but it's so difficult. Yeah. Difficult and very, very, very expensive too. Okay, so Melody, now let's talk about inspiration and motivation because that's also what you're very much about. Um, when you have gone through difficult times and you have had to kind of draw your 
your energy um, and your strength from, from something? Is there a philosophy or a motto, a quote or a scripture that really helps you to you know, come back to center? Come back to center. Um, I think for me, there's not a, a quote per se. I mean, the quote that I started everything on, like in life, I think the one, the one quote that I heard when I was a teenager, I want to say, or even my early 20s, that I really loved was um, by Voltaire. I don't agree with the word that you say, but I'll defend your right to say it to the death. Mm. I think that speaks volumes about the ability to give back to something, even though you believe in the, you believe in the freedom of speech, right? You believe that everybody has the freedom of speech. You might not, we might not agree, but I'm going to respect you enough and I'm going to defend you to others to let her speak, right? I think that's important to be able to let people speak, let them have a voice. You might not agree with what they're saying, but their voice is supremely important. And so for me, that's always, that's brought me um, through a lot and, and broadened my perspective a lot. Because when people are, you know, when I'm listening to something and I'm not agreeing, then I remember that. And I'm like, okay, I've got to see something. I've got to see something in this. There's got to be a message in here for me. There's got to be a lesson in here for me. There's got to be something that's going to make me have more value by, by gleaning from that. And I think that, you know, in that 2.0 slogan, we rise by lifting others. I mean, I think I, I definitely live by that. I think you know, when I meet with someone, if I can connect them, if I can somehow make their life better, um, it makes me better internally. So I think the rise by lifting others is just something that I, I absolutely live by. Um, and it's just, that's that. I think you answered this question just with that last question there. Um, but the next question I have is, what does a better world look like through your eyes? A better world looks like... Um, communicating a lot better um, and having enough respect to allow that conversation to openly flow because um, I know that when I feel that I'm not being respected or, or heard or wanted, wanting to be listened to I shut down big time ask my husband like if we I do not do conflict well like if we disagree on something I'll just shut down and be like yes that's fine well, that's not fine, right? And he's been able to teach me that that's not fine. And thank God I have a wonderful husband that says, no, it's not fine. What are your thoughts about it, right? Um, and so to be able to, to live in a world where we're able to communicate openly and to be able to help each other openly. I mean, the one, the one, another thing that I always tell people in any meetings that I have is cooperation is key, right? Cooperation. Now, you and I might do the same exact thing. We might want the same target market. We might be looking for the same revenue generation, but we can cooperate, right? We don't have to compete. So cooperation is key because there is enough business for everybody. And someone who, who loves you might think that I'm a weirdo, and that's fine. And we okay. have to understand that, right? Because... Clearly, I, not every single person in my life have I liked. Sorry. Don't worry. It's not you. Okay. So, but it's true, right? When we, and there's something that, that je ne sais quoi, right? That, that's something we don't understand about. We meet them. We shake their hand. We're like, eh, what? Go on with them. And you don't want to really have another conversation. Well, why are we so narrow-minded to think that that doesn't happen when we shake somebody's hand. That thought has been thought about us too. Like, so to, to realize that not everybody is going to love me and that's completely fine um, because I know that I don't love everybody, but I do respect everybody enough to glean something magical from them, right. whether it's a physical attribute or a, an inner characteristic that I've seen or whether it's something that I've heard about them from somebody else. I always store those positive things and I try to not dwell on the negatives, right? Because there's always something, everybody has something positive about themselves. Everybody has something positive. Now, what's, uh, what is one or two things that our community 
um, can support you with right now? Where do you need support and help? Um, support and help. Wow. Coming up guard with that one. Um, it, I'm such a do it myself. I think I really need to let people in. Um, so I'm building leaders right now for my new location. So I think if people are interested in, in, in housing in that 2.0 location, I'd love to have that conversation, um, a physical location and um, collaboration. Like if you just want to do a brain dump or a brainstorm and, and collaborate your business idea and I'll collaborate mine and um, we'll see how we can help each other grow. I think that would be great. I think that that is where everything is able to grow. That's great. Thank you so much, Melody, for being a part of our Change Agent interview series. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, the pleasure's been mine. Thank you so much. I'm so thankful that I've met you. Oh my gosh, I'm, th I'm so thankful for the person that introduced us. Um, so, and she's amazing. I sent her an email the other day. Um, but yes, I, I thank you so much for your time. I thank you for giving me a voice. Thank you for having such a strong voice. <laughs> for those that are watching, thank you so much again for following us and being a part of our journey as we bring to you some incredible stories and insights from people who are really out there intentionally trying to create these ripple effects so that we all can benefit. Uh, please remember to nominate yourself and others in your community who is creating that shift, a positive one for all of us. Uh, please visit us at nebula.soarcommunitynetwork.com. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. Bye.